Good morning, gardeners. This is Anna in the Unity Church Unitarian Garden, Children's Garden. And I am going to be talking about this plant today, a leaf. And um, as we light our chalice, I want us to think about leaves and what they do and the fact that we can eat them and be grateful for that. So I'm going to light my chalice. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith, the light of truth and the warmth of love. And if you'll sing with me, please. Rise up, O oh flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O oh flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. And then we do our joys and sorrows. And you can do this at home or you can do it at home in your heart. If you have happy things that have happened, things that make you happy, you use a yellow stone and put it in. And it's raining and so I'm kind of happy that I don't have to water the garden. <laughs> and the blue stone uh, for our sorrows um, I'm thinking today of a friend of mine who's been battling cancer and has entered hospice and it must be awfully hard for him and his family but um, as we say in, on Sunday services when the ministers are there we think of our friends and family who face their final days with courage and curiosity. So. We have a story today called Oliver's Vegetables. Oliver's Vegetables by Vivian French, illustrated by Allison Bartlett. Finish up, Oliver, said his mother, or we'll miss the bus. Can't we walk to Grandpa's house, asked Oliver. No, said his mother, it's too far. Hurry up. The best thing about Grandpa's house was the wonderful garden. I grow all my own vegetables, Grandpa said proudly. I don't eat vegetables, Oliver said, told Grandpa. I only eat french fries. If you want french fries, said Grandpa, you must find the potatoes. If you find something else, you eat that and no complaints. Is it a bargain? Oliver ran around the garden, but he couldn't see any potatoes. They must be hiding, he said, and pulled at the nearest leaves. Carrots, said Grandpa, just the thing for Monday supper. That night, Oliver ate his first carrots. Oliver took a long time making up his mind on Tuesday. Gran and Grandpa came to watch him. These crinkly leaves are pretty, he said at last. Are the potatoes there? Spinach, said Grandpa. They had spinach for supper. That was good, said Oliver. On Wednesday, Oliver got up early. Potatoes are very important, he said. So they must have big leaves. Here they are. Grandpa smiled. That's rhubarb. They had rhubarb pie that evening. That was very good, said Oliver. It rained on Thursday. When it stopped, Oliver hurried outside. Have you found the potatoes, Grandpa asked. No, said Oliver. I found slugs and snails. Are they eating my potatoes? Grandpa shook his head. That's cabbage. Oliver had two helpings. Very, very good, he said. On Friday, Oliver was sure that he had found the potatoes. When he pulled at the leaves, up came a bunch of beets. Oliver ate all of his beet salad. Very, very, very good, he said. On Saturday, Oliver played soccer. 
the ball landed in a tangle of sticks and leaves. Oliver was sure the potatoes weren't there, and Grandpa nodded. Peas, he said. Oliver had three helpings of pea soup that evening. Was it good, asked Grandpa. No, said Oliver. It was delicious. Oliver rushed into the garden on Sunday. Here they are. How did you know, asked Grandpa. They were the only things left, said Oliver. Can we have french fries now, Oliver asked. You scrub the potatoes, said Gran, and I'll peel them. Grandpa can cut them up. Oliver, Gran, and Grandpa sat down to eat. The door opened and in walked Oliver's mother. She saw the plate of french fries. Oh dear, I did hope Oliver would eat something different while he was here, she said. Oliver and Grandpa looked at each other. His mother stared as they laughed and laughed and laughed. Oliver went to his grandfather's garden and he was looking for potatoes because he really liked eating potatoes and french fries and things like that. And his grandfather was very wise and told him to look for the potatoes. And he put a condition on that. He said, anything that you pick, we have to eat. So over the course of the week, Oliver tried all sorts of vegetables that he'd never tried before. And lo and behold, he thought they were pretty good. And I think about that story because often when things are unfamiliar, we're a little scared, a little hesitant to try to do it. And I think of things like uh, maybe you're visiting a friend and they have different kinds of food at, and you've never had it before and you don't know what it's going to taste like and you don't know if you're going to like it. But you also know that it would be rude not to eat it. So that's one kind of courage. Um, sometimes in sports we do the same thing. I, I know a lot of kids whose parents sign them up for swimming lessons and they're kind of scared because they don't know how to swim and they don't know if they're going to be able to. But they go and they learn. Um, another example would be if you have a f new kid at school who's kind of scared and your teacher asks you to show them where say the cafeteria is or the library or whatever and you're really shy and not really comfortable doing that but you do it anyway so we all show courage in different sorts of ways and kale is kind of like that I'm gonna cut one leaf the way you harvest kale is you reach for the outer leaves and on the inside the plants continually form new leaves. So you want to harvest from the outside. And here's what kale looks like. So when I was a kid, we never ate kale. My mother would buy it because we had rabbits and we would feed the kale to the rabbits and they loved it. It took me until I was an adult and I had a friend who cooked some for me and I thought, oh my God, kale, where have you been all my life? It's fantastic stuff. Um, but you have to know how to cook it. And a little later, I'm gonna show you a recipe that you can do at home. Um, this week in the garden, we're gonna be harvesting kale. Um, you can take it home for your family to use. If we have extra, we'd like to send it to the food shelf, so be thinking about that. One thing else to think about, in this row we have five kale plants, one broccoli and one Brussels sprouts, and one thing you'll notice is the leaves are similar, uh, similar color. Um, this one has more little bits and pieces on it. We'd say it was uh, dissected or a kind of a compound leaf, but very, very similar. And there's a reason for that. All of these are plants in the same plant family. Um, they all were bred from an ancient wild plant called Brassica oleracea that grew on rocky coastlines along the Mediterranean and in England. And in some parts of the world they bred them for the buds, which is the Brussels sprouts. This was bred for the leaf. Cauliflower and broccoli were bred for the flower head, so they're all very, very closely related. I really like kale, partly because it's such a great vegetable in every season. We plant it early in the spring 
and we can start harvesting it as baby kale, very, very young. At this stage, we pull the leaves off. Um, and in the summer, when a lot of the other greens get bitter and go to seed and you can't eat them anymore, kale keeps producing and we can keep harvesting it. And in the fall, when the weather gets cold and plants die because they're frosted, this just gets sweeter and more delicate. And it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful vegetable. So here's the kale. Now I'm going to go over to the table and I'm going to show you how to make a kale salad. The recipe for this is on the parent resource pages so you can just kind of watch as I do it. So I'm going to teach you a, uh, a recipe that you can do at home, especially if you come to church and pick your own kale. And it's called a massaged kale salad. And when you start, you take your kale. This part is really, really tough. It's loaded with cellulose. And I take my fingers and I just kind of pull. My dogs love to eat the stems, and some people do too. If you cook them, they get tender. Um, but I take my kale and I pull off all the leafy parts and then that goes to the dog and then I take it and I chop it and this is something you're going to want to have a grown-up do for you or at least watch you very carefully. You want to cut it into fairly thin little ribbons like this And now I have the beginning of my kale salad. So all of those leaves, I had about six of them to start with, are now reduced down to this little mass. I'm going to take a big bowl and put my kale in my bowl. I'm going to sprinkle some salt over it and today I'm using a coarse kosher salt and there's a reason for this. Um, other salts will do too so use what you have in the kitchen but if you have something like this do do that. This is a coarser salt it's got more sharp edges and I'm just going to sprinkle that on and then I'm going to take a little olive oil and sprinkle that on too. And then here's the fun part. I'm gonna take lemon. Well, we'll start with this. Um, I take it and I literally squeeze it. And this is something you can help with in the kitchen. Your fingers are gonna get a little bit slimy from the oil. And the salt and the oil help it get broken up. And you'll notice you'll, it'll turn a darker color. You will see that. So there's a lot of cellulose in a kale leaf. And cellulose is one of the things, one of the uh, chemicals that plants make that help them get really, really strong. As we massage it, we're kind of loosening up that cellulose. We're softening it. Plants have got cellulose for all their body parts that they need to have be strong, like the stem that holds up the rest of the plant, like the wood inside of a tree, and like this. This has lots of cellulose. But for us to eat that, our digestive system can't break it down very readily. So when we do this, it helps very much to, to uh, make it more digestible and palatable. So then I'm going to take a lemon and I'm going to squeeze it. And that's one lemon. And then I'm going to take that juice and add some honey. Now the recipe says two teaspoons. I kind of estimate that. And if you like it sweeter, you can always put in more like a a tablespoon. And let's see, I need my fork, which is here. Take my fork and stir this together. There are other things you can add if you like. Uh, there are res recipes for dressings with peanut butter. There are recipes for dressings that use um, soy sauce, all sorts of stuff. But I like the simplicity of this one. It's basically lemon juice and honey and the oil. And then I add a little bit of pepper, fresh ground pepper. And then I like to add something colorful. Um, I'm going to use cranberries today, craisins. 
but if you've got a mango at home, if you've got an orange you can cut up. Um, anything like that that's colorful and a little sweet, I put in a handful of that. Oh yum, my husband loves those. And then I want well, like something with a little crunch, so I'll use nuts. I happen to have some roasted salted pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds, and I'll put those in there. And then after I stir this all up, I have a pretty yummy massage <laughs> kale salad. And we will eat that for lunch today. And here's what it looks like. All right, we are at the end of our lesson. We know all about kale. We learned a little bit about leaves and how they grow and plant families. And think about the nutrition in this. It's got a lot of vitamins A, B, and C. It's got iron, it's got calcium. It's a super nutritious vegetable from the garden. And for all the food that's growing here, we are very thankful. And on that note, we'll extinguish our flame. We extinguish our flame and the chalice here, but we know that the light of truth and the warmth of love go with us in our heart.